Ooh, what's up guys, and welcome to Pokemon Wi-Fi Battle, with yours real, of course, the Scarander. And this is one of my Elite 4 matches from the Lithio. Um, I, was really, I was an Elite 4 sand member of that, um, uh, <laughs> of that league, and basically, uh, I had two very, very close games with John and Diesel, so I'm gonna showcase both of them back to back. And this was the first one, and I had no prior knowledge of his team going in, um, so... All I really had was my main strategy, like, my sand team is super, super, super aggressive with hip Powder and Tyranitar's uh, sand setters. Then Cacturn has a um, cussed-up Destiny Bond set with uh, filler moves. Uh, Stoutland, of course, uh, Excredle, of course, and Ziggliff. And they've been working really well, like, I have a big fighting issue, uh, like, a lot of my Pokemon does get taken out by a fighting move, but the few fighting moves that is faster than these guys are pretty much counter on one hand, uh, at least this combo, and in sand, they are forced to go for mag punches, which means that they are not able to take them out, and there's a high price to pay for that, and Siglyph just picks up the few threats that are left. Now, if I look into my opponent's team here, he has a bulky team with both Mylodic and um, Among Us, uh, but besides that, um, actually the one that stands out most for me is actually Meanwhile, who can rip through my team rather effortlessly, depending on the set. So without further ado, let's go! Luckily, these games aren't too long, and um, yeah, obviously I'm not doing any special rendering here, and that is because, well, let's face it, I am short for time due to work, and that sucks as always. So anyway, he's gonna start with the Garchomp, and um, since I saw no um, Hazard set on his team, I decided to actually go for Stealth Rocks, I believe, right in the beginning, and that might actually be a bad call, because, of course, he has sword stance, and I just walked right into that, didn't I? So I'm forced to go for a roar, he's just gonna go for an EQ, and this is not my fully defensive power on, and that actually took a lot of damage. This is a specially based one, and that did not take that as well. Now, Zelda is gonna come in, not exactly what I wanted, it's, it's actually kinda bad, and I don't really know how to defend myself against it, and... Um, I'm debating now whether or not I should actually sack it out on, or if I should try to find a new footing. Uh, but every Pokemon I have is gonna get hard by this, so the only thing I can hope for is that he's gonna go for a uh, Hyper Voice, so I can at least take a resisted hit. And luckily for me, that is exactly what it does. Um, that's extremely important. That's seriously extremely important, because I would have lost the Pokemon here and then if it were for that. Now Hyper Voice still does a lot of damage. So in contrast to what I do, that's nothing. Um, if Keisho comes in, stuff is gonna go down. It's very, very straightforward. Uh, he's gonna go to Melodic, and Melodic can take these hits fairly well. Um, at best, an EQ should do roughly 50%, which should be in a range of 2 hit KO. But um, he also has to sack that Pokemon in that contrast, or he should have just gone to Among Us, I do believe. Which might have been the superior choice. Do it to regenerator and whatnot. So anyway, my Lodix of course is here, and uh, he's actually gonna decide to fire that off. Like I said, my team is super, super aggressive, like built aggressively. Therefore, um, you have to have the sack plays against me because you're not gonna find an uh, even footing <laughs> as the match goes on. Now he will drag in the guard jump, and um, I am in no position of actually sacking Kaiser just yet. And I know he has the sword stance. I know. All that jazz, but I was really hoping that he was gonna go for another sword stance on EQ to try to take me out. That is not what happens. And um, yeah, I am forced here to actually kind of sack me, folks. Now, Dragon Claw is actually not close to take me out, and that's kind of funny. Consider that I'm not invested in any defenses or anything like that, not even HP. So, I will break the sub. That's nice and all, but at the same time, I pretty much destroyed my. Sigilith here and then because of the sash is gone and all so I'm gonna go to Bugra set up the sand and basically hope that he tries to take me out uh, That's the only play he, uh, he could make or so I believe I'm waiting on Grand Claw and uh, It actually doesn't take me out. So I was like, oh wow, okay <laughs> Sure, that's um, that's unfortunate. But anyway, I'm just gonna fall off the pattern anyway um, There's no reason for me not to really uh, Since I need a sand turn really I need Tyranitaurus Pretty important, I could lose one sensor. So of course, Fulf is gonna come in. And the return is um, 
Yeah. It is enough. It is goddamn enough to take that thing out. So that's awesome. <laughs> so next, next Pokemon is Infernape. And that one, of course, is not outspeeding me. But I do risk the potential Mac Punch. But at the same time, I don't care. The exchange here is so much more important. And that is that he will lose the Infernape. Which is, of course, what it's all about. Um, but yeah, that was a really, really crafty move from my opponent's side. I think he's definitely feeling desperate here. She's going to go to Meanwhile. And I'm not sure I can take an Ice Shard. And um, when I have that gut feel... I really, really, really should look into it to actually care for it. Because, of course, it is enough to take me out. Then again, I had not a lot of switchings after that. And, of course, this answer will subside. So, I'm going to bring Rex, which goes Transor. And it's Assault Vested, so it's not really made going up against Meanwhile due to Meanwhile having a low kick and whatnot. But he's actually going to switch out on me, which I thought was weird. I actually did, because I was so sure that um, he was going to go for, um, ooh, what do you call it? Ooh, what do you call it? That was going to go for Loki and take me out. So I actually had me believe here that uh, he didn't have it. And uh, I felt that, that was important. Now, I know I have speed uh, among us, but at the same time, it's kind of dangerous for me to stay in. Uh, he's actually going to switch out, go into uh, Zelda, the, um, ooh, what do you call it? The God of War. And um, there is just a one train ticket from this guy. There is nothing I really can do. Um, I really need to let the Hyper Voice take me out. And that really sucks. But at the same time, we're not a lot happening with, uh, of course, um, <laughs> my um, Siglyph Dab battle. Uh, so I'm freely here to go for Keisha. I have two uh, turns of sand left. So I'm just going for an hour ahead. Just finish that off. And of course, the guard was going to go down. Um, now, Jubilee only has Among Us left, and uh, meanwhile, she's gonna go to his Among Us. And here I've decided that I kinda need to have a lot, or at least this HP survive an eye shot from the meanwhile. Uh, so I couldn't really risk it anymore. So I'm just gonna go to my turn. Which, of course, is the Cac turn. He's going for Hidden Power. Um, and that's, of course, it's gonna do a good chunk. And uh, from here on out, I decided that. I'm just gonna go for an Endure and just really call him, catch him off guard here. And the thing is, the reason I also switched out the Cactus was to like, set up a new um, round of sand, really. So he's just gonna go for Sludge Bomb. Luckily, mind you guys, he's not scoring a poison here. Um, so now I'm down to the cast up um, situation and I'm just gonna go for this Destiny Bond. And my turn is gonna show his destiny. His destiny, that is, to take down this Among Us. And that means you only got me one left, and I really, really don't have to care for it, because an Ice Shard is in no range of taking out my Excadrill. I just need to set up the Sand again, so... So he'll get that momentum. So, yeah. Also, that custom set with um, with Endure has been working wonders. It's not a smart set, but when it worked, it worked really well. So I have a lot of fun with it. Um, like I said, here's me while... And uh, also me was in such a bad position right now. I mean, sure, the low kick will take me out. But like I said, the eye shard is not in range of actually taking out Excadrill. And uh, he'll actually <laughs> not even try it. He will just give up. Which, you know, I get it. I do. Um, very, very tough um, situation, really. And um, there was really nothing else I could have done here. Uh, I do believe JUD fled... I played a really, really, really good game. I actually didn't forfeit, I just tried to go for another move. Never mind. Um, but yeah, I really think he played a good game. Um, I won due to holding on a bit longer, and I think stamina-wise my team survived better. Um, but also, having that in mind, this was the next situation. Yeah. So this is the next game. There's not a lot of changes. I decided, since he already know my character, that I'm going to bring a Scoff Godchamp this game. Uh, Scarf Garchomp has been in Team 2 uh, in every battle, as, and he's done his job, if anything. And I decided here, due to him having a Garchomp in our previous game, I thought it was smarter for me to actually bring uh, uh, Choice Band on uh, Excadrill instead and spam Earthquake, since he didn't have any Levitator or anything like that. And uh, Stoutland is now Life Orb and uh, has access to Thunder Wave. 
but uh, look into his team here, he actually dropped the Guard of War for Mega Metagross. That's bad. That's really, really, really bad. But how bad? You guys are just gonna go to find out. Now, I actually have a Mega Tyranitar this battle. Um, basically, for some extra power uh, against the Malolic. Uh, so I'm just gonna start with Azaxis, hoping that it starts off with anything but uh, Malolic. <laughs> God damn it. So this was not the most favorable matchup, so I needed to switch out and I'm just gonna go to Rex. Drinking my coffee at the same time. Sorry guys. Imagine just doing this in the morning before going to work. Uh, so anyway, here force I'm just gonna go for ice cream. And um yeah, no. There's not anything happening there. Now, I was actually decided here to sack off my um Tyranitar here and then because I needed to force the Malolic to 50% HP uh, so he, that he would force himself to go for a recover and pretty much from there actually switch out to Stoutland and finish it off but that was the only play I could make and I knew that he was just gonna scald and burn me and there was really nothing I could do to stop that more than hoping that the, the burn was not gonna come now Crunch does fair damage I don't wanna risk uh, the damage that is um, oh how do you say um, I don't want to risk um, Stone Edge misses, basically. I needed, like I said, to force him down to after 50% so I could switch out on it. And therefore also remain in the sand and just keep spamming uh, return if anything. So the next crunch is going to come and I score a crit. And that's super unfortunate for my opponent because that means that his biggest momentum got killed there and then. So anyway, he's going to send in Meanwhile and... Um, Luckily here, I actually decided to stay in because I thought it was so bad. I thought that, you know, sure, really, you know, <laughs> I, I felt so bad that I wanted to, you know, give him back the game a little bit. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that situation. So let's go to Kaiser, and this was definitely the situation I was looking for throughout. Now, like I said, I am banded, and banded EQ should do just about enough from everything, and I mean everything, on his team. There is no Pokemon in his team that's gonna deal with this kind of a damage. And um, also, I don't get the life or residual damage, which means I keep my, a lot of HP on uh, my Excadrill. Uh, Excadrill has a lot of HP, but I never really feel about that since his defenses are just so bad. <laughs> but yeah, that worked really good here. That worked really good. Now, he's gonna go to Godchomp. I've been in this situation before, uh, but there's really nothing I can do. Um, I'm canceling on K here because if it goes from an earthquake, then I'm done for. Um, so the power is my best bet and set up the sand yet again. And of course, he's gonna go for a substitute. So I was like, yeah, nice, awesome. And uh, <laughs> god damn it. So anyway, this time I actually I am the defensive he powered on. So there is nothing happening in that earthquake. Like you see, there is definitely like good substantial damage change there. Benevin. So just gonna go for roll really and bring back to me while I'm like, oh shit, no, damn it. This is probably not the most favorable situation, but at the same time, I did force him out so he couldn't set up. Now, I was in a bit of pickle, and it took a long time to decide, but I decided to bring in um, my Keisher because I knew that he was gonna go for ice and crash. I could survive an icicle crash, and then after that, force him to go for an ice shot, which means I can bring Stoutland. Uh, I know that it looks like a weird play, but this is definitely like the best play I had because that keeps all my Pokemon intact with minimal damage distribution against one of them. And um, yeah, I mean, I had really nothing else I could have done here. So he's gonna go for an ice shard. It still does a lot. I'm not gonna lie, it still does a good chunk of damage. And together with me being life orb and all, it's gonna fucking suck. <laughs> So anyway, I will lose the me while here though, which means that the, um, the pressure for um, uh, my my own guard chomp is not that big anymore, and of course return will take out the me while. Um, so like I said, the pressure is not as high on my guard chomp at the same time, I need to find a situation where I can use guard chomp, and it's still got to make a metagross and all. And of course, guard chomp is, you know, <clears throat> faster here, so I am forced to switch out, and I'm forced to switch out to power on again. That sucks. That sucks so much. It really, really, really does. Because I can't really do anything here. So he just can go directly for the sub. That's fine. That is really fine. Uh, I do believe I tried to set up rocks here. Um, 
I don't really know why I did that, but at the same time, I guess the residual damage is nice. Uh, so another round of EQ, that's totally okay. He's gonna put me down in 100 each uh, damage point, and um, like I said, just go for self rocks. And uh, this time, uh, he's actually gonna get me, he's gonna get me good, really. I I should have just roared, but you know, I got cocky, and I decided to go for a slack off. And he takes this opportunity to set up a sports stance, and what that means is that not only is my um, slack off kind of wasted, because now it does uh, roughly over 50%, but also I'm getting a free setup, which is something I should not do, because I'm wasting precious sand turn, if anything. So here's the earthquake, and yes, it's a 50% hit this time around, and uh, I pretty much lost 4 HP by doing that. Uh, in contrast with left doors I got back. So in a way the metal slam is here and I really had no idea what to do here. I really didn't. Uh, I was like, oh shit, damn. If this is the mega form, we're gonna have issues. And if he has the same set that Escalo had that I was going up against another uh, Elite Four battler against me, he had Magnet Rise. That was bad. So anyway, I decided to switch in the Saxus because I knew that was very likely he was going to go for Grass Nod, and if so, then you know, I should be in a fair position. But he's going to go for Magnet Rise directly, and I was like, ah oh, shit, ah oh, shit, ah oh, shit. Um, so I needed a better plan. I definitely need a better plan. And as of right now, I, I don't have it. So I'm just going to go to Pound again. I don't know why I did this either. This was definitely like stress place. I was like, ah oh, shit. Uh, we're gonna set up the sand again, we're gonna scatter out the moves, and he's, ah, oh, Ice Punch, of course, yeah. He won't take me out, but I'm not gonna take another one. Hmm, what do I do? <laughs> um, so, after I fought long and hard, I had one idea. That was Zack Stoutland. I hate saying this, but that was the only play I could make. Uh, I can't lose a power down, I need a sand turns, I need everything, really, uh, to make them... Um, smoother ride for um, Excadrill. I can only hope that his Magnet Rise uh, turns out. I have 5 turns of Ryzen. So anyway, this time I decided to go for Heat Wave. Uh, I need to force the HP down on Metagross. He is gonna survive against me no matter what. So all I really needed to do was to try to get all the damage I really could or needed on it and then from there pretty much try to, uh, well, void out and if anything so, it was tough. It was really, really, really tough. I didn't want to risk it like that. Uh, so, at least the electromagnetism is gone, which means I actually can bring Cater back. And, of course, just spam earthquakes. Um, that was the only thing I could do. And, uh, yeah, it actually worked out a bit here. Like I said, I was not really feeling it. I was not in a good position whatsoever. And I didn't really know what to do. So it was really frustrating, it really were, because I needed the sand for potentially his Infernape. Now, of course, the turn is gonna, you know, void off, and what makes that even worse is that I can't stay in with x -Real. I really am forced to sack x now, and the only way for me of coming back doing so is by actually sacking Booger first, hoping he doesn't go for Electromagnetism. If he does that, you know, then fine. Uh, <laughs> damn it. Uh, but of course, just gonna go for Magnet Rise, and uh, shit. Like I said, there's nothing I can do. I decided to go for a whirlwind here in case I survived. But he just he can just go for it. He can just go for it. And it's gonna go for grass and not finish it off. And that's completely fine actually. It's actually not a bad play at all. So from there on out I had only one decision made to left. He has Inferno left too, so I need I can't use Keisher anyway. So I'm just gonna go for an iron head. I'm not hoping for a flinch. I'm not. I'm hoping he's in enough range of damage that I can just lock myself into Outrage and win the game. Uh, so he has, like I said, this Pokemon left and Infernape. I only got the Guard Chomp left. And this is gonna be a close one. This is definitely gonna be a close one. So I'm going for Outrage just to, you know, take him out. And all I can hope for now is that his Infernape is not Scarfed himself because then he'll win. There is no reason or no way I could win this battle if that's the case. But I think he was sad because Assassin will break through and uh, we win this game 1 0 again. I was super, super close. So, yeah, we knock out uh, Johnny Diesel or JDD, which was really, really tough to do because he's an LBA player and, you know, we're 
We're in the same leagues. It, it feels bad to no knock another player, and it's nothing wrong with the team he has here. It really should beat me, but uh, I don't know. I guess I guess it was lucky the first round, and this one was definitely a close one because I did screw up a lot in the mid game. But we made it back. Mega Metagross, what a freaking poke! And good job, really, Johnny. Um, I had a lot of fun battling you, and I hope we battle a lot more in the future. And if you guys have been watching, sorry for this long video, it's with 20 minutes, wow. Uh, but if you guys also enjoyed this, and if, even if you didn't, make sure to leave a like. <laughs> so guys, I want to thank you for watching, of course, and take care, guys. Bye.